It is a felting day here at Dittmer Knittery. I've knitted the bag. The water is hot. I have my rubber gloves on and I'm going to felt this bag. Again, a knitted bag we're going to felt. This is hot water immersion felting because I am going to immerse the entire thing in water. I'm pouring in some hot water right now that I've heated on my stove. Water is very hot. This water is very hot. This project is not for children because it does involve the use of hot water. You do not have to use very, very hot water. You can use tap water or slightly warm water. It takes longer. I used to use just hot tap water, but as I've become a little bit more experienced, I have gone to using hotter water. I'm very careful not to put my hands in there until the water has cooled off a little bit. And I have a wooden spoon here. I'm gonna poke this round and get it down in the water without putting my hand in there. Now, I don't want too much water because that will dilute the soap that I'm going to use, but I'm going to add just a little bit more hot water. I think that will do for to get us started. I think that will do to get us started. And at first, I am just going to Move it around with this spoon because, like I said, it is too hot for me to put my hands in there. Even with the rubber gloves on, that water is too hot. So now that I have it completely wet, I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and let the water cool off. And then I will begin felting. water has cooled off now. It's probably been five or ten minutes. Cool enough now that I can put my hands in the water with my rubber gloves on and there's no danger of me burning or harming my hands. So I do have a little bar of soap here. This is an olive oil based soap. Any soap will do. Don't use detergent. Don't use Dawn or Tide. And see so the first thing that happens when you immerse the knitted piece in the water is it gets big and it stretches. And just take care not to stretch it too much, not to pull on it, not to open up those stitches any more than they're opening up just be because they've gotten wet. Now, of course, ultimately the bag is going to shrink, but the first thing that happens is it gets big and heavy. And so for just a few minutes, not very long, take care not to agitate too aggressively. Begin just by sloshing it about a bit, making sure it's all wet. Open up the bag at the top and turn it inside out very carefully, making sure that this bottom seam and any other seams, if you've created other seams, make sure the seam is not felting to the bag, which rarely happens, but it can. So take care to turn it inside out a couple of times and just make sure it's not felting onto itself. We don't need to worry about the strap or the flap just yet. I'm just trying to get everything wet and start a little bit of felting. I'm going to add some soap and just swish the soap in the water and onto the item. You don't need a lot of soap. As soon as you begin to see a little suds, that's probably enough soap. So, don't expect a lot of suds. As long as you can see there's soap in there, that's sufficient. And when this water cools off, you'll get rid of this soapy water and put some more hot water in here. So you'll add more soap at that time. So not too much soap at a time, a little at a time, all you need.
So I'm just beginning with some gentle agitation, taking care to continue to move the bag about so I'm not felting in one place or making the bag felt onto itself. Like I said, that's rare, <laughs> very rare, but also very disappointing. So take a moment to make sure it's getting started before you felt it too aggressively. And already the yarn is beginning to look a little bit different, a little fuzzier, not too much, but definitely going to get started felting. If at any time you need to rest or take a break, that's perfectly fine. You can leave the bag sitting like that in the water for a few minutes. If you're going to leave it for more than a few minutes, you might want to drain the water off, especially if um, any yarn, any, <laughs> excuse me, especially if any dye from the yarn had bled into your water, which in this case hasn't happened. But if that were to happen, you certainly wouldn't want to leave the bag sitting in there. But it's okay to leave the bag if you need to take a break even up to a day or so, it's fine. This isn't something you have to accomplish in one sitting or in any kind of a hurry. You can definitely see a change in these knitted stitches and the yarn. It's getting fuzzy, it's beginning to felt, and I can agitate it a little bit more aggressively. And maybe slop some water on myself, but that is part of the process. Anyway, the way I do it. Now that I have it started a little bit, I'm going to take a look at the flap. It usually doesn't need much special attention other than just take a look at it. Make sure it's getting felted. It's the shape that you want it to be. And there's my buttonhole. That space right there. So the rest of these spaces will close, but that buttonhole will remain open. And um, button will be able to go in and out of there. It won't fray once it's all felted around that buttonhole. If you're concerned that it, the buttonhole may not be felting, just apply a little extra soap and give it a little extra felting. And we have a ways to go here, so that's something you can do as you continue throughout the process if you see it needs it. And that's true of anything you might see if there's stitches that aren't closing. It's okay to give a little extra felting to a certain area of the bag that looks like it might need it. Now let's take a look at our strap. I don't want to pull on the strap. I don't want to stretch it, but I do want to make sure that it's feeding through the openings where I applied it to the bag. And it is very nicely. And also if I do this, running this strap back and forth through these openings, and then pull on the strap a little bit and get to a different area of the strap and do that. And do this all along the strap, all through the process. This is the way this strap will get felted. And if you don't do that, it will likely felt anyway, but it's going to felt more evenly if you pay attention to it and give it these pulls every once in a while. And like I said, make sure to move the strap through the bag so that you are doing this to different parts of the strap all along the strap. This also helps 
felt these holes where the strap is feeding through, which these holes are just a stitch where I pushed the strap through. And it is going to felt solid and hold that strap in place. And like, like I said, I like to pay extra attention to make sure that that hole and the strap are felting well. But I've also found, if I forget to check carefully, it usually felt okay anyway. Beginning to see quite a change in these stitches. Now, this, the holes are not closed. You can clearly see my glove through there. But the fabric is changing and it's felting well enough that I feel as though I can be quite a bit more aggressive with my felting at this point. I think I'm even going to add a little bit more hot water and a little bit of soap because it looks to me like things are going very well. And with a few minutes of work here, we'll hopefully see a difference in the appearance of this bag. Yes, it's going very well. bag around. You don't want to accidentally keep felting in the same place. You want the whole bag to felt. And that is what it's doing. So this is where we began the bag. There's our increases on the corners. And we worked up to the top of the bag. The decreases are not as obvious, but we did some decreases there. We added a flap. Flap was optional. You may not have a flap on your bag. You may have a different type of strap or handle. The process is the same. Now, if your handle or strap is sewn on, instead of feeding through these holes. Of course, you don't need to worry about that. You'll just need to um, felt those straps or handles as you go along. Now you can see that I am able to pull this quite freely and I have enough felting on both the strap and the bag that I'm no longer concerned, very concerned about stretching it. I'm still taking a little bit of care, but I really like the results when I spend time moving this strap like this. Get a smoother, rounder strap if you give it a little bit of extra attention. There, you can see that the flap is beginning to felt. The buttonhole remains open, but it has nice edges. It's not going to fray when it's all finished. It's going to be just a nice buttonhole. The buttonhole will be able to go in and out easily. The button will be able to go in and out easily. 
And I usually don't choose buttons until after I've completed the bag because I'm not very good at judging the buttonholes. When I get to that point where I'm knitting the buttonhole, I generally am very close to finishing the bag and I knit the buttonhole and pick a button later. This melting is going very well. Seeing a lot of change in this bag. Now you can still see a little bit of my glove through there. If I poke my fingers, but these stitches are closing. This is becoming a felted fabric quite nicely. And it hasn't taken us very long to get it to this stage. Now this water has gotten rather cool, so I'm going to take a break. I'm going to heat up some more water and then I will continue to felt. I've drained the water and this is what the bag looks like so far after one session of hot water felting. I'm going to pour in some more hot water. Again, be careful with hot water. I heat it up um, on the stove in my Dutch oven. I only heat water in this pan for this process, so this is a cooking pot, but I only heat hot water in it, so that's fine if you use a cooking pot or a teapot, tea kettle to heat up your water. I did drain the water from here, this, the first batch of hot soapy water I had. But of course, it's impossible to drain it all. Well, not impossible. It's difficult to drain it all. I didn't attempt to. So some cool water remains and the bag was so soaked and it was cool. So this water is cool enough for me to begin to work with it because there was already some cool water in the pan when I added that hot water I just added. And we are making good progress on felting this bag. You can see a little bit of my glove through the fabric, but those stitches are closing. This will have a nice texture when it's felted, but it won't be obvious that it was knitted it will just have a nice felted fabric texture. So none of the knit stitch definition will remain. Maybe a little bit of garter stitch around there and around the top. That's possible. You'll see a little bit of texture, of knit texture there. But for the most part, you're just going to see nice felted fabric with no knit stitches obvious after it's completely felted. I'm felting as I spoke about before. I'm taking time to felt this handle and you'll notice I'm moving along this strap, um, not doing it in just one place, but moving along, feeding it through. And that is all that's needed to make this strap and the places where it's feeding through felt very nicely. If you just take a little bit of time to do that, if you just saw me do how I moved that strap back and forth through there. And the same is if you have a drawstring or any other kind of strap that runs through the bag like that, any other part of the bag, just move it attach it before you felt it and move it around as it goes through the felting process and it will become part of the bag. Not stuck to it, just, you know, as a, a strap should be part of the bag. It won't come loose, won't come off. That's what I'm trying to say. This will, this strap will stay on here. Very nice, it's looking very good. And with just a little bit more agitation, we're almost to the point where we see 
No. Well, a little bit. Signs of my glove. I was working on the strap. Now let me give some hard agitation to this body of the bag. The whole thing. And it is well felted enough now that you can handle it aggressively. You don't need to worry about stretching it too much as long as you, you know, don't be too hard on it. Because it, it is going to turn out to be a good bag, a good shape. I like to use the Patents Classic Wool and other commercial yarns that I've mentioned, like Knit Picks Palette Yarn. Galway wool, Fisherman wool, Ella Ray. These commercial yarns felt reliably and usually don't leave any dye in the water. And if they do leave a little bit of dye, it, it usually doesn't transfer to the bag at all. They felt reliably and they don't leave, these commercial yarns rarely leave a lot of debris in the water. There's not a lot of fuzz or fibers in there. I still wouldn't pour it down the sink, but with some fuzzier yarns, with some more specialty yarns, you can get um, the dye bleeding into the water because of course, perhaps the yarn maker didn't expect you to felt it and swish it around in hot water, so the dye might not hold up to that. I don't think that's the fault of anyone. It's not the fault of the person who made the yarn or the person doing the felting or the person doing the dyeing. Just could be that that dye is not going to hold up to that process. And I've had that happen. That was a kind of a disappointment when I felted something with a really beautiful, um, specially hand dyed wool yarn. And the yarn bled all into the water so quickly that there was no way I could keep it from staining the bag. Now the bag turned out to look okay at the end. I kind of panicked at first, but it turned out okay, but it didn't turn out the way I imagined it at all. This bag, I think though, is going to turn out very close to the way I imagined it. Now we have a good solid felt fabric. I'm going to continue to felt for a little while because it's been my experience, even though we have a good fabric and it looks thoroughly felted, it will felt just a little bit more. It might change in size just a little bit. And I do like my projects to be thoroughly felted. You may stop at any time. You may stop when there's still holes in the fabric, if that's what you wish, and complete your project from there. You may leave your project overnight and see if you like the way it looks and felt it some more the next day. I think I'm just about finished felting here. And the videos I've made of this felting process have shown all the felting, the hot water immersion felting that I have done to this bag today. When I am finished felting, and I'm very nearly so, I don't think I'll go on too much longer. When I'm finished, I'm going to drain this soapy water into my waste bucket. And then I'm going to put cool, clear water into my pot and let the bag soak in that for a few minutes, swish it around. That's to rinse out the soap. So you might want to rinse it a couple of times. I, I find that once is usually enough, but if you feel like you need to rinse it two or three times to get all the soap out, you can do that. But we didn't put a whole lot of soap in it and it won't take much to rinse it out. After you've rinsed it, get rid of that water. Put some more cool, clear water in the pot and add a splash or two of white vinegar, ordinary white vinegar. Put the bag in there and that, that vinegar water, swish it around and let it soak for a good 15 to 30 minutes. 
Now, your bag won't smell like vinegar. This is just to return the wool, to help return the wool to its natural pH. Then, after it's soaked, squeeze it out. Try not to wring it, just squeeze it. You're not going to get all the water out of it. Get as much water out of it, out of it as you can after you've rinsed it. Lay it out on a towel and then roll it up in that towel and squeeze some more water out of it. You can let it sit in that towel for 15 or 20 minutes and then get a fresh, clean, dry towel and do that again. I usually do it twice, wrap it in the towel and squeeze it out twice. And then I get another dry, clean towel and lay the bag out flat. And usually the bag doesn't require much shaping, but you might um, you know, need to move the flap into place where you exactly like you like it. It might be a little lopsided or crooked. This one looks like it's going to be just right. You want to continue to run the straps through your hands as the bag dries, as you continue felting. It just makes for a nice, a nicer, rounder strap the more you handle it. Continue to handle the bag as it dries. I'll show you the bag lying flat, and I will show you a couple of very basic, simple, beginning shaping techniques. Here's the bag right out of the felting pot. All I have done is squeeze some water out of it, as much water I, as I could get squeezed out of it, and then I just laid it out here, and I'm going to roll it in this towel, and let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes, and then do this again. Get another dry towel, a dry clean towel, roll it up again, and press the moisture out of it. And of course, you're not trying to get all the moisture out, we're just trying to get some of it out so then we can um, set it to dry. And I'll be back to show you just, just a little bit of shaping. It doesn't require much shaping, but I wanna show you just a couple of things I do and uh, what I do to help it get dry. I have squeezed some water out of this with by rolling it in the towels. And now I'm ready to leave it to dry. And, and I say, now it's ready to dry. I'm not going to leave it alone. Every once in a while, I will, again, run this strap through. So it's okay to move it around, touch it um, as it dries. It will take some time to dry, many hours perhaps a day or two, and that's fine. You can set up a fan to blow on it. That helps quite a lot. One of the things I like to do with most of my bags is give it a little shape, a little bottom. And so just push in those corners and then set it up and put your hand in there and shape that bottom of the bag by pushing on it shaping around in there and it is just a matter of like I said push it in at the corners and then when you stand it up you're able to flatten it out by pushing on it on the inside so now you have somewhat of a flat bottom you can shape the sides a little bit just a little bit you're not going to change the size and shape of it but you can make it have a little bit more shape. Now, because it's wet, it may not stand up on its own, so you could lay it down for several hours until it really does begin to dry. And then when it begins to dry and you feel like that it can stand up like that um, without collapsing, you know, you don't want it to dry with that fold there. And that tells me that I need to let it lay down for a while. And what I'm referring to is, if the bag is slumping like that, you don't want it to dry like that. If it's not able to stand up straight on its own, let it, let it dry like that for a while. Then when you do set it up, you can use a couple of these sophisticated tools to hold it in place. Some jars. 
And then it's standing up, the body of it will dry better. If you blow a fan on it, that will help quite a lot. And like I said, um, there's no reason to just leave it sitting where it is, move it around on the towel so it always has a dry spot on the towel. Continue to move the straps through. I like very much how this flap turned out. The buttonhole's kind of small, so I can choose a small button or I can add a tassel. I could open that buttonhole up a little bit with some scissors and use a bigger button. If I open it with the scissors, I'll probably put a couple of stitches around there. And you can also felt it a little bit more if you open it with the scissors. And I wouldn't actually cut it. I would just snip around in there in that hole. And then if you, if you did that, then you could re-wet that part and felt it a little bit if you needed to. Very simple to do to make that buttonhole a little bit larger if you choose to. So this bag, when it's dry and gets a button, will be finished. <laughs>